Hi everyone, welcome back to Tallulah Talks. It is Saturday, which means it is time for Saturday's Haunting Hour. Um, so today it's going to be probably a short video because I couldn't really find much information on this particular alleged haunting. So this is a little bit different because usually we talk about um, hauntings that we feel are real. Um, so basically I came across this on Google, it was about this woman called Alma Fielding who in 1938 believed that she was being um, terrorised essentially by a poltergeist. Um, this then got the attention of uh, um, this guy who was part of a couple of psychic in institutions um, and he did want to believe that there was something paranormal out there, however he mostly is known for trying to debunk stuff and that's what he essentially wanted to do with Alma Fielding. He wanted to essentially debunk her entire story. Um, so my notes are a little bit everywhere because I, you know, I got I got it from various different sources and I believe there's a book as well. Um, I'll link it in the description box um, and it'll, it basically tells you about the alleged haunting of Alma Fielding and this... Um, psychic research person who tried to debunk her story. So let's get started. So this happened in 1938 and strange things were happening in a quiet suburban street in uh, the UK. Um, this turned out to be Alma Fielding who was described as a working class woman from Croydon. In 1938, um, it is said that her home became rampant with ghostly and spiritual and poltergeist activity. So if you don't know what a poltergeist is, it is essentially a ghost that moves objects um, and they can become quite aggressive. Um, she alleged that tables buckled and there were strange markings that appeared on people's bodies whenever they entered the house. Wardrobe doors would slam um, and the poltergeist involved allegedly just like to cause mischief for um, Alma, her husband and her son. Cutlery would fly across the room and um, a radio actually smashed itself on her tiled floor. The wardrobe actually also allegedly hurled itself across the room to her son's bed which obviously was normally occupied by her son and um, however he was out at this time. So there's also alleged that um, physical objects would just randomly appear um, as if out of thin air and this actually included jewellery that was stolen from a local jewellers and this would just randomly appear on Alma's lap. So this then kind of got the attention of a psychic researcher called Nandor Fodor and he was essentially called in to help see if Alma was essentially a fake. Um, he had previously unmasked Charles Stewart who um, I guess alleged of some ghost activity but it just turns out it was him dressed in a white, um, a white sheet and he also allegedly debunked um, I guess what was a fam famous medium back in that time uh, called Agnes Abbott. So at this time, Fodor invited Alma to a psychic research facility, which he was part of, and he did a series of tests and investigations just to basically see if she was possibly faking. These were in a controlled situation, um, and Alma was asked to um, be strip searched, and she was also made to dress in like a body stocking, so I think it's like one of those body suits. Um, however, even with this being done, these apparitions allegedly still appeared, um, but Fodor just wasn't, he wasn't having any of it. Um, it was then discovered by Fodor that Alma had um, lost two children previously um, and received like no emotional support from her husband and so Fodor basically concluded this was her trying to gain some sort of attention. Um, she had experienced quite a lot of traumatic things in her life like a uh, mastectomy, um, kidney operations and removal of teeth and she's quite, she was quite young as well. I think she was, I don't know, like maybe in her 20s, 30s at this time. Um, so in 1938, um, 
a flying so before this a frying pan allegedly flew across the kitchen um, and this was when Alma began to feel quite unsafe in her own home it was written in Kate Summerscale's book of the event that Alma was actually very well off so although she was a working class housewife at that time I believe she was very well off and um, she essentially could afford to break crockery and cutlery and things around the house um, and again Fodor had suggested this was a way of dealing with her previous traumas and previous experiences through life. At this time Fodor was interested in the paranormal and he joined a bunch of um, paranormal societies um, and so when he moved back to England it was said that he really immersed himself back into the paranormal world. He joined the Ghost Club, London Spiritual Alliance and other clubs of like devout believers. Um, however, he did want to catch the poltergeist allegedly haunting Alma, but it seems that he was more preoccupied with calling her out for being a fake. Um, he was essentially hoping to find proof of trauma rather than a spirit and he could basically have an explanation for these events. At seances, it was said that he was allegedly open-minded, um, but again, he was still prepared to debunk those who were lying about what they were going through. So, Alma's display of paranormal wasn't theatrical at all, um, except for kind of the jewelry flying across the room, or things flying across the room, that was really the theatrics to it. So, um fakes they will make this big deal out of it and make really big theatrics whereas Alma didn't so that made her a bit different um and the ghost or poltergeist allegedly um because witnesses had been privy to its actions um were described as domestic hoodlums Fodor was actually surprised when Alma was wearing a glove which suddenly peeled off of her hand and appeared in her opposite hand However, he did soon suspect that Alma was faking all of this. Um, and he th he actually got so sceptical that the um, Institute of Psychical Research actually kicked him out because he wasn't being as open-minded as what he should have been. The poltergeist allegedly began ha haunting Alma and her husband in February 1938. And again, they saw objects flying across the room. And when their 16-year-old son had come down to see what was going on, things were thrown at him as well. The next morning, eggs flew across the room um, and this was when Alma phoned the local paper. And again, this could be something to get attention because personally, if that was me or any of the other cases that we've discussed, um, that's not your first reaction to call the paper. Your first reaction is to probably call someone like a priest or like paranormal researchers and investigators. That wouldn't be my first port of call. So I do kind of think she was faking it. Um, she invited journalists to see the events that were taking place. And again, this was how Fodor then became involved. As he spent time with Alma, Fodor and colleagues saw many things happen. They saw wine glasses fly out of Alma's hands. Um, they saw um, things fly across the room when Alma had her back turned. So it was kind of impossible that she had done it herself. Um, a vase also disappeared and rematerialized in another room. And again, this was why he wanted to find proof that she was allegedly faking. Um, researchers later invited Alma to the institute um, and when at the institute the activity continued where objects would appear and disappear and fly across rooms um, and this actually included objects from her home and live creatures which included a terrapin. Fodor believed Alma to be a fraud and he actually tricked Alma into submitting an x-ray on a portable machine so that he could see that she wasn't essentially hiding anything on her person um, but he actually found evidence that Alma had hidden objects on her person and uh, he, uh, he at least knew that some of what was happening was fake 
Um, through Freud, uh, who was is the father of psychology, he believed that Alma was causing the activity through repressed trauma. Um, and again, this was when Fodor was kicked out of the institute. And after this, nothing else really came of it. Alma moved to the countryside where she held seances and she died in 1976. So uh, that was a nice short and sweet one today. My opinion is that she was faking. Um, poltergeists don't typically follow you outside of the home. And I'm not sure how she did like the objects flying the clock across the room or materialising or anything like that. She must have been some sort of, I don't know, maybe like a close up magician or something. Um, so yeah, I think that what she was doing was fake, but the you can uh, buy the book by Kate Summerscale. It's available, I think on Amazon and um, and on the Kindle as well. Um, I believe it's called The Haunting of Alma Fielding. I'm not entirely sure. But I think I would definitely like to read it. Um, if you have more cases for me to look into in terms of paranormal, definitely um, go and comment on this video. And I will be back on Wednesday for Killer Wednesday.